Greetings, fellow travelers. As the week reaches its thrilling midpoint, we're broadcasting from the mountains of West Virginia. Embrace the spirit of adventure as you join us on this daring journey to the untamed wilderness of Let's Find Out with Diego Bonus Overdrive Wednesday. On this episode of Let's Find Out, from the award winning author who brought you the best selling Clifford's War series, brings you the long awaited prequel to this universe. Two troubled brothers on a path of destruction, traumatized by their past, Darius and Marcus Ty are led to live a life of crime and bring bloodshed to anyone who is unfortunate enough to cross their path. All this plus more, please welcome to Bonus Overdrive Wednesday, a great friend to our show, author Jay Dennison Reed. Reed, my friend, welcome back to Let's Find Out. It feels like it's been forever since I've seen you. What's up, man? That was that. Hey, that was that was one heck of an intro right there. I I, I gotta I gotta thank you for that. That's awesome, man. Yeah, I mean, I, I was inspired reading the the notes on the book, and I was like, man, these two guys are badasses. We're gonna talk about the Thai uh, brothers. The Thai brothers um, are badasses, that's for sure. Yeah, and before we begin, now it's been about two or three weeks since I've last seen you. You're at another place right now. How how is the dad shirt game where you're at now? It's not can't be as good as what you and I have been doing. Oh, the, the dad shirt game is alive and well, my friend. Um, you know, uh, fr- it's, it's it's like they got the memo when I got over to that office. They, there's a lot of people over there that that, that that do the the Friday fun shirts. As you can see, I'm wearing my uh, uh, skull and flowers today. So, yeah, and it, no, and I tell I tell you the truth. Every Friday, I made it a point to see can I can I beat Reed today? Can I be the champion <laughs> of the dad shirt? And I think I came close once, and I even think you gave me like a participation trophy for my tiger shirt. So you I came appreciate close a couple times. Yeah, you know, but I can't dethrone the the king of the mountain there. But um, <laughs> it's all in good fun, and you know they're very comfy shirts. You know, I really highly oh. recommend. You're never too old or too young to wear one. Oh, definitely not. They're they're awesome shirts. They're and they're they're fun. They're colorful. They're you know they're they're expressive. So, and you know that's what we're all about, right? Yeah, we know we're creators and. When you put on something like that, it kind of, I don't know, it makes me feel a little more creative in a way. I don't know if that's the same thing for you, but I kind of feel a little bit better about myself, like a, the wind in my sail type of deal. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad it's giving you some self confidence, everybody. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. You know me, I'm just, I know, I'm just talking nonsense. Let's talk about how we got here with the prequel in the Clifford's War series. Clifford D, we we know and love him, and now with a new book when was the right time to write the prequel because as i read the show notes man i mean i'm thinking this like i said earlier there's a lot of badassery with these two guys uh yeah yeah so in in the in the first book um the tie brothers uh played um a relatively small role as far as the plot goes i mean they were definitely very very important to the plot and and um the the story i don't want to give anything away for anybody who hasn't read the first book yet but um they were definitely a, a, a very important part of the story, but uh, it was it was not a lot. There was not a lot of detail about the Thai brothers, and I felt that it was kind of a, an injustice to them because their story is huge. Their story is is is, is massive, and um, I felt that uh, to to pay a, a you know um, the the due respect, I had to write their story. So after I wrote the the sequel to Clifford's War, I had to go. I had to stop for a little while. Um, if if you look at the the years that books came out, I, I took about uh, uh, it was a fourteen months or fifteen month break uh, from writing because I knew that I had to go back and and tell the story of the Tie Brothers, you know, to to do it justice. Well, with that fourteen month break, but you were really on a break, maybe writing. But if for those that 
follow the show and follow you on your socials, you were a promoting machine out there on all these events. Yeah, uh, you all. Yeah, you got to you got to find your readers, and that's that was my mission for the for that that time period. You know, when I wasn't writing, is I had to go find my readers, and and I found them. So, so uh, uh, it was it was time that I started uh, telling the story of the of the uh, the nefarious Tie Brothers. And that's what I wanted to get to because during that that break, and I and I know that kind of like me, and I always have a notepad where I'm at work or anywhere I go. Sometimes an idea pops up, I have to write it down, or it'll get lost in the universe somewhere. So the download will not work if I don't write it down. When you started getting into a little bit more behind the story of of the Tie Brothers, where did these ideas originate from? Did you take these two characters from? maybe the history of serial killers in the past or was it just something that you just borrow it's little bits and pieces and then just put it all together in one original form well yeah that's that's actually a good analogy for that because that's exactly what it is i mean you you see stories you read you read you know newspapers watch tv shows you you, you know uh listen to stories that p- other people tell and you just kind of grab little nuggets little pieces of that information and you start populating your own story uh i mean just the other day, there were, there was some like really crazy stuff that happened in the news. And, you know, I got home from, uh, from work and I looked at my wife and I was like, did you hear that story in the news? And she was like, yeah, that was pretty nuts. I was like, we need to put that in a book, you know? So it, it, it's, 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 you know, like the, the, the real world crazy stuff, you know, it really kind of, uh, sparks the imagination in, in, um, you know, in storytelling. So, um, you know, little pieces, like I said, you know, TV shows, movies, you know, you, you read the news, you see something crazy and, and, you know, some guy tells you like, Hey, guess what happened to me this weekend? And he tells you some, you know, wild off, off the wall story. And you're like, yeah, I need to use a bit, you know, bits and pieces of that in, in my next, in my next book. So it, yeah, it's, it's like, you know, stealing ingredients from, from people's recipes. <laughs> no. And that's pretty much even all creators do that. But I think, I think we have the advantage of, I, being as in tune as we are with gathering stories or in the research, and especially in the area that we live in, there's always material we can use. Yeah. And not to disclose what area we live in, but you know, there's always something going on here, at least in the up in you know Interstate 95 or 81. There's always something going on. Now, compared to your last books, this one has a little bit of a more of a darker feel because for the listeners of let's find out we don't get the video version of this, but in your background, you have the cover of your book that right there. It tells me I'm onto some sort of journey that, you know, it, it's, it's very Doesn't dark. Mean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. The story of the tie brothers is definitely a tragedy. Um, and um, what it's about is uh, two, two young boys who grew up in a household where the father was a monster, the mother was trying to be their savior, and it just didn't work out. The father destroyed the family, and they had basically no one, uh, as far as guidance goes, to 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 for them to grow into to men. So they they did what they could do they, to survive, and they basically grew up to be monsters of men, and they they lived in the in the the monstrous shadow of their father. That that kind of hounded them for their entire lives. So it's 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 more of a cautionary tale, I guess you would say, of how how to how not to raise your children. But uh, but yeah, that's that's the crux of of what the story is about. So what was your comfort level in going that dark with your storytelling? Honestly, it was not great. Um, matter of fact, uh, my my editor for the first two books, um, Elliot J. Emerson, I, I call her EJ. Um, I actually pinged her and I said, Hey, would you mind helping me, um, with this book? Because I need to make these characters a lot darker than, than, you know, I'm, I'm comfortable going. And, uh, so yeah, she said, yeah, she, she'd take on the task and, 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 um, she made the father more monstrous. Now I'll I'll give you a little bit of an example. The, the father, when I wrote when I wrote this, the, you know, the first manuscript, the original manuscript, the father was an alcoholic, 
And um, when I when I handed it to EJ, she took that element away. And I, I wanted and I asked her, I said, why? Why would you take that away? You know, and she says, I don't want to give him an excuse to be a monster. He's just a monster. So that that struck with me. And I was like, you're absolutely right, because if you make him an alcoholic, it gives him an excuse. And we don't want him to have an excuse to be a monster. We just wanted him to be a, uh, you know, a bastard. So um, she she handled that really, really well. She wrote some of the darker scenes with, um, you know, there's some domestic violence and some some sexual abuse in the beginning of the book. And um, she made that, uh, you know, a little bit more vivid. So um, I think she did a really good job with, with that overall. And um, I think the product that we're releasing is something that, uh, you know, people are going to read and they're going to be holding their breath at certain points. And, and that's kind of what we wanted. So it's interesting. You mentioned something there during the writing process, you take your ideas, you pass it on to somebody and they can kind of pick it apart a little bit and they can, or in a sense, make it better or make it more, a little bit more understandable, maybe for the readers. Yep. As a creator, you really have to be open to criticism. How does how do you handle that? Because I know it's kind of like this. You know, this is my baby. It's kind of like tell the wife, "Hey, I wrote this. What do you think about it?" And then the wife's like, gets the uh, the sharpie, the the, the yellow <laughs> one. I gotta get this, this, or go. Or she'll stand on my way and just like hey, all the red. This ink. looks yes. <laughs> well, um, I'll be honest with you. When I when I wrote the first book. And even even the second book, I was I was um, I was very uh, I guess susceptible to criticism and and critics and um, it a few a few um, of of the the more uh, brutal comments would kind of get to me a little bit, but uh, as as I kind of matured as a writer, um, you know, when I was writing my my third book, it it really, well, let me go back. It was, it was actually during the second book where, when I kind of, I felt like I grew on this, but um, I was getting kind of torn apart from the second book. There was um, a particular um, uh, editorial review that was not great. And the person that reviewed it didn't like it. And uh, so they, they, they bashed it and um, you know, other places loved it, and other you know, other readers absolutely loved it. It won an award. It was on Times, the Billboard in Times Square because it won an award. So, it's not like it was a bad book. It's just that that one person didn't like it, and that's what hit me. It wasn't that it was terrible. It wasn't that it, that my work was bad. It's just that that person didn't like reading the book. So, I mean, that's what you kind of have to look at and say, you know, I'm I'm writing this story for myself, and I'm writing this for you know, I'm sharing a piece of me with the world and not everybody's going to like that piece of me that was shared. You know, you can't, you can't please every single person on this earth. You know, just ask my ex-wife. <laughs> oh, heavens. You know, we can do a whole show about exes here. <laughs> no, but I understand what you're saying, but you've done something that people are coming along this journey with you. They're following the stories. They're following the characters. You've added some extra, I would say, new characters to this book. If you can tell us some about, I think you added uh, a, a detective. I heard a yeah. rumor about one. And yeah. Yeah, yeah well, see, the, the, the detective is, is based upon a, a good friend of mine. Um, and uh, I think you know him. <laughs> his, his name is his name is Diego. Uh, oh. And uh, he's, he's the... Uh, He's the original detective on the case. One of, uh, I don't want to give too much away, but um, um, one of the Thai brothers um, gets in the habit of, of um, killing prostitutes. So um, Diego, the detective, uh, is the first guy to start investigating this uh, with the police department. And he's probably one of the smarter cops on the force. Unfortunately, as, as time goes on, um, the, the Thai brothers are actually very smart and know how to cover the tracks. Um, they, he, they stay elusive and Diego ends up retiring. But uh, he does come back towards the end to, to figure out, uh, you know, with, with the new context clues that uh, the, the main protagonist of the, of the first book, Clifford D, um, starts finding some clues 
and he shares it with the police and they start figuring things out at that point. So. Sounds pretty awesome, man. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I, I'm honored that even you even said that. And as you were talking, because I'll be honest with you, Reed, I met you about what, two and a half years ago, almost three years ago. Yeah. About three years ago. Yeah. And there's a different, there's a bit of a difference in you compared to that. Not that it was not, it's a, not a bad thing. So don't take this the wrong way, but <laughs> I saw your hustle promoting your books. I saw your struggles with, you were talking about the prequel and sometimes, you know, you hit your writer's block or you're so busy promoting something. You really have to buckle down and start working on, on your new material. Sure. Does it get easier after each book or is it just as hard as doing the first and the second? Well, I, I think once you find your your groove, once you find your routine, I mean, you're, there's always going to be struggles. There's always going to be little hurdles you have to get over. You know, um, you know, the, the kids got football practice or you got to cook dinner that night or or, you know, um, the, the, the car tire blew and you have to find a mechanic or something. Something's always going to happen. That's going to that's going to, you know, break up your routine. But the, the, the important part is just to get back into that routine as fast as possible, as quickly as you can. And once you once you kind of get into that groove of writing and, and you get used to um, the, the uh, you know, the creative juices flowing, it gets it gets a lot easier. Uh, with my first book, I, I think it took me uh, almost almost five years to write that book because of poor habits. You know, I'd write a few sentences here, a few sentences there. Maybe I'd write a chapter one month and then I'd write you know, a paragraph the next month. It was, it was very, you know, erratic, but um, you can't really rush the creative process. Sometimes it happens that way. But I, I think if you develop, you know, good habits and, and give yourself, you know, a lot of time to do things like that, then, you know, you'll get used to doing some stuff and you'll, you'll think about good ideas throughout the day. And you, like you said, have a notebook, you take notes and, and then, when you have that, you know, half hour, 15 minutes or full hour, or however much time you, you give yourself to write, you can start throwing those ideas on, on, uh, on paper and then, you know, massaging the words to, to be what you want it to be. Yeah. And, and for those out there who are creators, authors or podcasters, don't underestimate the power of a regular pen or pencil and a notebook, even sure. a sticky pad. Cause you saw my office, I have them all over my monitor, but sometimes you'll, I hear that one thing. If I'm hearing, if I listen to an audiobook or a documentary, one word or one sentence could just open up a whole world of creation. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So I, I try to keep something to, to write on with me at all at all times, you know. And you know, you you always have like your phone nearby that you can you can uh, take a quick note. You can text yourself some information. You you don't you wouldn't believe how many times I've emailed myself you know, a paragraph that I wanted to put into a book, you know, it's, it's, it's just the way it is. You gotta, you gotta keep, keep notes. Now. And I know it's, it's very, it's too soon to tell because the book just came out what last month or two months ago. Uh, about three weeks ago. Yeah. Ty came out. Of, uh, actually it, it was about two, two weeks ago. It came out two weeks ago. All right. So, you know, I might have that confused. Cause I think at one point you were doing like a, cover reveal like each time was a little bit different part of the cover was shown so that's yeah. why yeah so now that it's two weeks fresh it's, it's a beautiful book there's a certain level like oh, finally you can relax a little bit but i know you and i know you always got some things working in your in your mind uh if there's going to be a fourth book and i know there will because you're gonna have many books i'm already two chapters in i i knew it i read it i saw it in your eyes are we going to stick with the same in the Clifford's War series universe, or are we going to venture yeah. out to something I'm, a little bit I'm, different? I'm, I'm already two chapters into the the third installment of Clifford's War, not a prequel, an actual third sequel, I guess you call it. It's going to be a, a trilogy with a prequel, so for, the fourth book of the Clifford's War series. And uh, I'm going to make a quick prediction here that I foresee you being back on this show next year. When the book comes out and uh, we're going to talk about that. Yeah. 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 I mean, I've already got titles picked out. I've got characters picked out. Uh, this, the, the plots already uh, thought about. I haven't writ written it down yet, but I, I know exactly where it's going and how it's going to happen. And I just got to connect dots. So um, 
I, I hate saying this is going to be a quick write, but this one might be a quick write. I have a lot of stuff already plotted out up here. Oh, because I was like, is it ever? But, you know, if it's you're never it, a quick write, it never is. <laughs> it, it, there's always, like I said, there's always hurdles. Something happens and you have to you have to figure out. So uh, I, I may have just jinxed myself. Who knows? No, no. You know me. I'll, I'll keep pestering you. Are you writing? Are you writing? You know, I do that <laughs> to other people, too. You know, so let's, let's do it. I'm going to ask you a few questions here. And I know yeah. that we're going we're gonna to have a little fun here. Um, talking about the new book, Marcus and Darius. If there would be a, a movie made about your new book, who could you imagine be good actors to play Darius or Marcus? Oh, man. Um, so um, it, that's a really good question. Uh, for Marcus, I'm not exactly sure. Somebody somebody big and brutal. Um, um, but for, for Darius, I'm thinking, um, oh, the name, name just escaped me. Um, the, uh, the guy that played Venom, um, t Tom, what's his name? The Bane, the Bane guy, right? Not, not, uh, the guy that played Venom. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. He was in a, in a movie called Warrior. And yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's, Is it it's Tom, Tom Hardy? Tom Hardy, that's it. Yeah, oh. Tom Hardy. Thank you. I, I knew it was Tom something. I couldn't. I couldn't think of his last name. Yeah, he hopefully he doesn't watch your show and 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 then you know curse me out. No, you want that. <laughs> you, I think you kind of want that. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, that would, no. be, that would be great. Yeah. It's like who is this guy that Tom hates so much? Jay Dennison Reed. Yeah. What is this? Tom? <laughs> But I, you know, we were, we, we, matter of fact, we were watching Venom like a few months ago, and I was, I turned to my wife and I said, you know, he would make a great Darius, and she's like, yeah, he would absolutely make a great Darius. I mean, like, you know, character, you know, the, the appearance, the, the physique, characterization. I mean, he would be perfect for that. But as far as Marcus goes, I'm thinking somebody like, you know, a little bit bigger because Marcus is a is is bigger. He's the younger brother, but he's you know a bigger brother. Um, so I, I don't know somebody. Uh, Maybe, maybe, um, I don't know. Um, How about, I, I got one for you. I'll help sure. you out. I might not be helping. I'm the opposite of help. That Dave Batista guy. Batista. Yeah. He's a pretty big dude. Yeah. Yeah. He, I think yeah. he lifts weights a little bit here and there. Yeah, a little he, bit. Just a little bit. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But <laughs> no, I mean, it sounds, <laughs> you know what? That's a, that's a perfect choice for that. And Darius and Marcus, let's say they're writing down the highway or an alley in a caddy somewhere. Yeah. And they're about to, you know, do some unfortunate things to somebody who's very unlucky to cross their path. If they would have a playlist in their iPod, what do you think they'd be listening to? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, so I actually talked about music for, for uh, the story. And um, I think gold by Sir Sly would be, pretty much the theme song for the book. I mean, if you, if you look at the lyrics, you know, yeah, it's, it's, they're pretty spot on when it comes to what, what the book's about. Um, you know, maybe, maybe highway to hell. <laughs> Naturally. So yeah, these, these are some bad dudes. They, you know, you don't want to cross their path. And with all the anger, these brothers have pinned up. Did they ever, ever stand a chance? When they were young, I mean, it, it sounds pretty damn sad, brother. Well, they that's 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 just the story, really. That's the story. They they had chances and um, either they didn't know that they were chances or they just chose the wrong, made the wrong decision and, and chose the wrong path. So there were definitely ways for them to get out. There was definitely definitely, uh, um, you know, uh, things that that went that came across their path in a choice they could have made to to um get out of the situations that they put themselves in but they were constantly making the wrong decision no bro that's some real life stuff right there i mean you, you see it all the time you read about it you hear about it in the news and yeah yeah that's unfortunate but that's definitely something that the readers will need to find out when they Download or buy the books off of you directly. I prefer, you know, I have a signed copy. I beat most of you, so I'm pretty good. About, I'm pretty happy about that. <laughs> With that being said, my friend, for the listeners, a bonus overdrive Wednesday. 
that want to learn more about you, your books, and all the events you'll be at, where can they find this out? And where are you going to be? Well, um, if if I if I remember what you said correctly, this 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 one's coming out in October. So, at the the end of October, I have back to back events. I'm going to be at the Lions Club of Charleston, West uh, Charleston, West Virginia, um, for uh, remind me what it's called again. Oh, you'll be at the Branson Civic Center for Cryptid Halloween. That's right, Cryptic Halloween. I forgot. I forgot to write down the the, the title of the event. I wrote down where it was going to be, but <laughs> that's okay. Yeah, but uh, yeah, that's October 26th from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Cryptid Halloween. That's going to be a fun one. Um, Ty will be there. My other two books will be there as well. So if you haven't read those other two, you can pick up all three. Um, and the day after that, I'm going to be in Ashburn, Virginia, at the Comic Logic Lot Con from noon to 4 p.m. That's in Ashburn, Virginia. Yeah, and I believe those they're getting bigger each year, right? Oh, yeah, those lot cons are huge, man. You need to come out to one. I love to. I'm just so, you know, the word is lazy when it comes <laughs> to traveling. And I need to do that more also because I, I need to attend more events. But I'll definitely see you there at Cryptid Halloween and Ranson, the Ranson Civic Center in West Virginia. Your website. Yeah, jdenisonreed.com, www.jdenisonreed.com. Uh, yeah, you can go there. You can check out my events. You can uh, actually, um, you know, take you know find my socials on there. But if if you if you don't want to go to my website, that's fine. Uh, my Facebook is J Dennison Reed Books. My Instagram is just J Dennison Reed, and I'm on Goodreads at J underscore Dennison underscore Reed. So if you know my name, you can find me. Yeah, definitely. I know where to find you, my friend, and I really appreciate taking your time off your busy schedule to be on the show. And um, I was going to ask you one more question, but I think I'm going to save it for the next time you come on, because when that new book comes up, man, I know it's going to be on fire. It really will be. This has been another excellent episode of Let's Find Out with Diego. Bonus Overdrive Wednesday. Please check us out on all our social media pages. Catch us on YouTube and Rumble. Like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for taking this journey with me. Until next time, my friends. All content on this broadcast is a property of Diego the Podcaster and is served directly from our servers with no modification, redirects, or rehosting. All celebrity impersonators are paid performers. The impersonated celebrities do not endorse or promote any views or opinions expressed by our guests, Diego the Podcaster, or Bonus Overdrive Wednesday. The information shared on Bonus Overdrive Wednesday is provided on an as-is basis with no guarantees of completeness, accuracy, usefulness, or timeliness.